This is video help on homework number three. Problem number one deals with Archimedes' principle. And you'll notice that that is stated on sample problem number one within chapter three. It states that the buoyant force upward on a floating body is equal to the weight of the water that was displaced. So when you have something sitting in the water, it pushes water out of the way. If you take that amount of water that got pushed out of the way and you weigh it, that is equivalent to the buoyant force upward. Now in that example problem, they don't go through Newton's second law, but I wanted to do that in the video because that's, what, that's the method you're going to see also in Physics 108. It's a so-called uh, free body diagram approach in which you have a buoyant force upward, which we'll call F sub B. And... Uh, then you have the weight of gravity acting down on this wooden log. So we'll call this is the weight, also called the force of gravity. It's the same thing. And F of B is the buoyant force upward. This is called Newton's second law that says that if you add up the forces, the summation of the forces is equal to the mass of the body times its acceleration. Since this is, since this is just sitting there floating, the acceleration is just zero so that you have the buoyant force upward minus the force of gravity acting downward is equal to zero. This means that the buoyant force upward is equal to the force of gravity or the, the weight of the uh, the weight of the uh, log there. Now the way that you find the the weight of the log is you take the mass of it and we'll say that's the mass of the wood so we'll put a W there for that times the acceleration due to gravity in the metric system that's 9.81 meters per second square Archimedes principle which is what you're supposed to solve up here tells you that the buoyant force upward is equal to the weight of the water displaced therefore if you're looking at the weight of the water displaced you want to put a W Wait a minute, that's not going to help any. Can't use a W for both of those. Let's say H2O for that one, and G for the acceleration due to gravity. So we end up getting, since the gravitational terms cancel out there, the mass of the water that got displaced, that got pushed out of the way, is equal to the mass of the, uh, of the wood. Now that's possible because it says in the problem, and we're modifying our problem here to be different than the example problem or the sample problem in chapter 3. It says that the density is 0.5 grams per cubic centimeter. It also says that the length of the log, it's a new length for this one, is 50 centimeters over here. And note that in my sketch up here that capital L is equal to L1 plus L2. So we're, we're using this uh, approach in engineering problem where, where we have a drawing we have some equations, we have what we know, and what we're looking for is L1. So now we've also listed our unknown. We want to know how far above the water surface this log is sticking up. It's going to depend upon the density, and here we're using something that's less dense than water. The density of uh, wood, so we'll put a row for uh, row sub wood, that's a Greek letter row. Another given is that the density of water, H2O, is equal to one gram per cubic centimeter. So that's another given that we'll need in the problem. Now, density, rho, looks kind of like a P, but it's a Greek letter rho, is defined to be uh, the mass of an object divided by its volume. Now, notice we have masses over here, so let's use that uh, as kind of a starting point by saying that if you solve for mass right here in general it's the density times the volume. Now let's make it more specific. Let's take this information up here and use it over here. And we can say that this is going to be the density of water times the volume of the water that got displaced. So I'm going to use a D there that it's talking about the volume of the water that got pushed out of the way. That's equal to the density of the wood times the volume 
of the wooden cylinder. These are two things that we know, and these are two things here that we can further describe with another equation. We can say that the volume of a cylinder, in general, is just pi r squared times the height. Okay, so if you take that and put it in over here and make it specific to the water displaced and, and the wood, you get the following. The volume of the water displaced is just this bottom part that's down here. So you have pi times r squared, and r is the radius of the log right there. And um, then also the height of the water that got displaced. That is labeled as L2 in our diagram. Okay, and then over here you get that uh, you have the density of the wood, and the, density, and the volume of the wood is pi r squared times capital L. Okay, so you'll notice that the radius of the water displaced and the radius of the log um, is the same, so therefore they cancel out on both sides. So that's why we never really were given the radius of the log is because it doesn't really matter. The only unknown in this equation is this one. You know what this is, and this is, and that is. So why don't we just solve for it? Even though that's not really the one we're looking for, you could find it as follows. All right, so this right here would be 50 centimeters. This would be the density of the wood, which would be 0.5. And this would be... Um, the density of water, which would be 1, so I guess you can just do that one in our head, 0.5 times 50 centimeters, and just get a number over there. Now, in order to figure out our answer, we just go right over here, and we realize that L1 is L minus L2. So once you get a number for this one, you take it, and you put it right here, and you say 50 minus whatever that is, and that is your new answer, and make sure that you... Uh, Put a number there, three significant figures, and units.